just having that technology built in, any type of technology that we get hold to, I think it's going to have a very positive um, benefit on our students in the coming years. And now, another thing about our school, we also have a, um, an internet cafe um, located on the second floor in our school building, and it's just a, a it was originally set up for when we received the one-to-one -one laptop initiative. And the students just go in there and it's like, it's, it's the probably the cleanest room in the whole building. Like there's no no papers and nothing. It's just laptop, it's like a, a laptop friendly area. You can just go in there and just work. It's like no, anything on the wall, nothing like that. It's just like the most peaceful place in the whole school. Um, like she said, we service the fourth grade students um, because she felt like they had the, the most gain to make. And so she put tutors in all of the fourth grade classrooms. There were only um, two classrooms of fifth grade that had two. All right, these are the program components of MSCI. And working with the iPods, I felt like all of these entities came together. Um, the leadership from both schools, the, the high school and the intermediate school, and even the superintendent, when, when things didn't work out in the beginning, they all came together and figured out a way that, um, that we could all make this program successful. I did not do this by myself. I had so many people to help me, from the bus driver to the JROTC um, colonel to everybody. So they really made an effort to make this a success. <coughs> I know y'all are tired of us talking and really just want to see the iPods. <laughs> In addition to the equipment that we received uh, with the grant, Crystal and I both were awarded 20 manual computers um, for being, what were we? Uh, <laughs> the best. The best. <laughs> In fulfilling the obligations of the grant. So, that were perks. We were told that we would be launched and we just did what we were supposed to do. Okay, now the iPods, we, let's see, those are. But she has some apps on there that she downloaded for the fourth graders. I saw that she had a um, math app with some formulas. You also had, <coughs> like if you go to the basic math one, and then you can click on either addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then like a little quiz come up. You get like one right and then click on one that's click on the wrong answer. And then it shows you like what it shows you that it's wrong and then it also shows you what shows you what the correct answer is. Put it on the iPod. Chris, tell us how you, how you populate the, the podcast onto the, the 
iPods because they may think you have to do it one on one. Okay. We have a monthly card that all 30 of the iPods connect to. <laughs> she doesn't take the bread from <laughs> And so once you get the once you get whatever you want on your computer, all you have to do is sync two cards, two cords to your computer. So it syncs the whole entire top card, the whole entire yeah, top card, top shelf, and then the whole entire second shelf. So you don't have to worry about um adding to each individual iPod unless that's what you want to do for a lot of differentiated instructions. So like if you had to say you needed to work on just uh, basic math, then I can upload apps specifically for you. And some of those show up under music or songs because there is um, audio to them. So it just depends on what kind of <coughs> app you get out of You can also, as I mentioned earlier, create your own information that you would like to upload to the podcast or for instance, your keynote. If you want to upload the keynote, press upload it to iTunes and send it to the to the iPods. That's your lesson going to the kids individually with the iPods. And you don't have to be there, you know, standing in front of them. It's there. Okay? They need not take these at home at night. They just have to make No, they don't. We, we have a check out, check in system. Before they leave, they, they write, I, whoever, am taking this, and I'm going to owe my blood if it comes to a thing today, say that I'm checking it out and the time, and then when they come back from the school, see, they're bus, my, yeah, her kids are too, they're bus to the school, so you shouldn't lose in between coming from my class to going to the company, to come, to come back, so we have them check in, check out, we know exactly who has what number, they do not take them home. And actually, when I made rules, they didn't actually, my students didn't actually get theirs until they made it to the other site. So I put it in their hands when they made it there, and one, once before we got on the bus, they put it back in my hand. So there are ways to keep them from trying to stay. But we, and that's why you use your most trusted students. You know, you pick who you want to use. And after a while, I start to develop. You know, my students were telling, teaching me some things because right. they knew more. So I had one um, student who I'm going to present with an award tonight. He was my technology student. So everything that, you know, I can rely on him to take over whenever I need to sit down and do something, he's there to take over. And a lot of colleges have apps too. So if you have an iPhone, there are a lot of apps you can put on for yourself. These are not just for children, they have adult apps too. I saw you that you have something about grading scale. Yes. About grading papers, the percentage and everything. And if you wanted to change the screen like if you, if you have it on this, let's say you get down something. If you have it on this screen, all you do is just turn it sideways and it automatically turns to the side. And if you want to make the screen bigger, you just make your fingers so like that. So you can see the screen. I put a presentation on the iPods for my for the uh, Board of Education. And the board is composed of a you know, group of older teachers, retired teachers, and they were looking at this thing like, okay. And I had to walk around and put all of them, you know, let them listen to it. And they were just so amazed that I put a whole presentation to them on the iPod. Yeah. Okay, like, for instance, with the podcast, this is a sample podcast, and it's for this great main job. And this is for the competency and the object. You know, the teachers can. We went to the. No, no, we're not talking about this. Oh. Can you? Yeah, the video. Crystal, can you make the podcast open up? The one from the website? And it does 
best show in a minute. Yeah, I think it on the show, um, thumbs up on the show on that Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Walter and Captain refer to the same person. Walter serves as the drag object of the verb name. And to make sure that the students engage in active listening, what I would do and what I actually got the idea for my students. We uh, created closed activity, like closed reading, you know, you skip a word, you have to fill it in. Mm -hmm. So we, would cre we created that, and in my class, I would grade it to make sure, hey, you're gonna get a grade for this, because you know how students are. We're gonna get a grade for this, but yes. So they have to actively listen. Well, if you have that, that will become their notes. So if it becomes theirs, this is what you listen to, hey, put this in your notebook. And as teachers, we have to be more receptive to taking on the challenge of learning about the technology if you already don't know. Because I know, like most of you all, we all have teachers at our school who are like, I'm not about to learn how to do this. But we have to realize that this is what's best for our students. This is how they learn. When she did the presentation earlier, I was like, hmm, I fall in that age group. So I guess I need to say that's how we learn because I'm only 24. So I fell into the age, the millennium age group that she was referring to. And honestly, that's how I learned. If, if you get in front of a classroom and talk for an hour or for an hour and a half, I'm gonna fall asleep. And we have to realize that's how the kids are too. So we have to be more interactive, we have to be more engaging to get the students to learn the material. Any questions? Um, the grant is actually called the Early Educators Grant. Early, yes, Early Educators. And you can just speak to the young ladies that are beside you. For the young ladies that are beside you. Look, I was trying to use the kids so she was closer. Yeah, she was closer. She Again, if you are interested in the Early Educators Grant, you can speak to Susie later on, and she will have some information for you. And let me tell you, the applications, the applications went out uh, last year to 15 school districts in the Delta, all the way from Port Gibson, all the way up to, to Holly Springs. There are 15 school systems that our organization works with within this Delta area. The applications were um, submitted again to the school districts about six weeks ago. They're slow in coming back, so I still have I still have slots to fill. Right now, I have heard from uh, Western Line received two, have, they've already been notified that they've received two uh, grants in both of their high schools. Uh, Humphreys County has received one, and I have gotten inquiries of intents to submit applications from many school districts but they just haven't come in yet so if you're a delta school and this has to go to a high school with a partnership at an elementary or middle school and that is the that is the number one requirement to receive the, the grant is so to have the to build